This episode of Who Chose is brought to you by Squarespace. Previously on Who Chose. I hope this works. Uh, I actually took the lid off this Coke bottle and it seems to be holding up all right. So I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that this just works this way because it's a lot easier than me redesigning it. Uh, even though I probably will redesign it in the end. So for the planting of this system, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of the large pots for large plants, obviously. The medium pots for medium plants and the small pots for small plants, go figure. Um, so at the back, I'm gonna plant some cucumber melon and some Roma tomato. Now, I don't expect these plants to actually get to fruiting point. I just like the idea of having some taller plants at the back. Uh, I'll probably stop this system at the point before they get the fruiting. But in the front, we'll have some basil in these two pots and throughout in our round pipe mini hooch buckets, we're gonna have some uh, varieties of lettuce. So cos lettuce, these are seeds I've saved myself and have a fantastic germination rate. Let's plant these out and see what we can get out of this system. That's the miniature 3D printable 
hydroponic system. Now, we're gonna pull these pots out and inspect how the roots have made their way through the system and whether they're gonna cause any problems in the future in a second. But let's just discuss this method and why we're seeing some of the deficiencies and inconsistencies throughout the system. Now, during the time lapse, you would have noticed that the reservoir ran dry, the lettuce back here actually died back and then came back to life after I refilled the res and the pipe that allows each of these buckets to wick. So that's exactly what this system is. It's a wicking hydroponic system, automatically refilling from the bottle at the back. And the reason that you're seeing some of the detrimental effects, I think on the tomatoes and the basil is because I've been trying to maintain this system as a multi-plant system. However, I know that the lettuce can't handle too intense light. So I've had this 200 watt full spectrum grow light turned down to about 50% the whole time. And you can see with the legginess in the basil and the tomatoes that they haven't enjoyed it as much as the lettuce, which is actually doing really well in this system. The negative effects on the lettuce, probably because of the fact that I'm using a full strength nutrient. So about two to 2.4 EC, a grow nutrient. Whereas usually I would use a 1.3 to 1.5 for the lettuce. Adjusted the nutrient to sort of deal with all the plants in the system, but I've tailored the lights to the lettuce. So if you were gonna run this system, I'd recommend doing either your fruiting or you know your plants that can tolerate a higher intensity of light or your lettuce and your greens. So then you can have your EC perfect, your lighting conditions perfect, and you won't see this mixed bag of results we've got here. I'm actually pretty happy with how all the plants performed, considering, I mean, these three tomatoes are competing not only with the other plants in the system for the nutrients, but they're actually competing with three other tomatoes for the one pot. And realistically, you really only want one tomato in that pot. The cucumelons did really well. They are showing signs of stress, obviously, but again, that is a fruiting vine. <laughs> so, if you are more realistic than I am, and I never expected this to be a perfect grow because of all the mixed plants, I think you can get a really good grow out of this system. The reservoir was a bit small, considering how many plants we had in the system. I really should have thinned out the lettuce, but here we are. <laughs> so I'm actually surprisingly happy with how this system turned out. It doesn't take much filament. It's a fun little project and it'd be great for kids to do. The res size is actually pretty ideal for greens, although you may need a bigger res if you're gonna go for your fruiting plants. However, I wouldn't suggest like large fruiting plants like these tomatoes. I think this would be a really good strawberry system and I may do a strawberry grow in it in the future now that I've seen how it performs. If there's enough interest in this system, I will make ends that can hold larger reservoirs. So if you are interested in that, please let me know in the comments and I'll gauge how much interest there is in this system. And if you could leave in those comments what kind of containers you'd like to use, because I'm not familiar with like every container style that's widely available throughout the world. So just leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. So I'm gonna pull apart this system and show you what it looks like with all the roots and stuff, but that's right after a word from the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one online tool to allow you to build websites and online stores with access to powerful marketing and analytical tools. It's a great tool to allow you to build a meaningful online presence, collect donations with Apple Pay and PayPal, share socially with a configurable sharing button and its powerful analytical tools give you insights into who's viewing your website and what they're looking for. I've been using Squarespace for the last couple of months to build my own website and it's been super intuitive with all the tools that I've needed to create both a beautiful online presence and the ability to communicate the message I'm trying to purvey. So if any of this has piqued your interest, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, links in the description, 
And once you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com forward slash hucho for 10% off a website or domain. All right, let's pull apart this system and see how the roots have behaved within this environment. Oh, that's pretty cool. Have a go at that. That's a nice bouquet of lettuce. <laughs> so, this is the basil. And again, really, ooh, it's caught up in the cucumber moment. A lettuce again. There's nothing out of that basil one. Okay, that's really interesting because you know what that means? That means that the wicking action is drawing enough water and nutrient up into this grow media that this whole basil plant can sustain itself with just the roots in this grow media. So when it does start looking for more water and nutrients, it'll start to move its way down into the res, but that is a good pot size for that basil plant. That's what I'm getting from this. So this is the interesting one. I'm really interested to see what we're gonna get out of this tomato. And I think we're gonna have excesses of roots coming out because it's gonna be, I can even see on top where the roots, like it's taking up all of the cocoa. You can see the roots just all throughout that cocoa. Yep, there are a ton of roots going down. Yeah, look at that. So I don't think, I don't think this pot size is big enough for three tomatoes. I think you might get one tomato, but you will need to repot. I don't think you could, oh, you might be able to get full term with maybe a determinate tomato, a small bushy tomato plant. I think you may get away with this pot size, may. I'm not sure. And interested to see this one. Nothing. Absolutely, I was actually expecting the most to come out of this one. So that tells me that that is a decent pot size as well. And as you can see, again, we've got the roots are actually all throughout this media. So I think you may actually get away with using this pot size for your cucumelon. Yeah, very cool. Now, surprisingly, I'm actually okay with this pot size, uh, maybe for a single lettuce. Uh, there's not much media in it, and I would highly recommend if you are using this system, I mean, the more media, the better. This pot size is great. So the hooch adapters with another pot stuck on top, that works fantastically. So if you have a hole saw and a glue gun, that's the way to go. You will get away with single lettuce, I think, in the hooch buckets. But the negative of them is they will take more filament and have a feeling that it will be easier to reuse these pots than it will be these pots because the filament can be porous and the roots will make their way into the filament. They'll be hard to clean. Whereas these pots, the only roots that will make their way into the filament are the ones in the net cup below. This is the way to go, I think. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoochos. All of the STL files for this system are available on my Patreon. And thank you to those Patreons that are supporting me, because I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So, happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos. <laughs>